besides being one of the most popular Japanese aircraft carriers out there, the kit is actually a rather good kit in the essence that it's pretty much a Tamiya kit, but it's from Fujimi. It's a rather simple to build model, and it has very, very high quality details. Now then, there is one major advantage that I do find to building the Akagi over a lot of Japanese warships, is the fact that you don't have to deal with the Type 21 radar net that goes above the island. Historically, Akagi's island was too small to mount radar, so it never actually had any radar, and the good thing with the kit is that it doesn't look like that you're placing a block on top, or I don't have to buy photo etch or hand make a new net so it doesn't look like a block. Now, one thing I will say I disliked about the kit, but this is probably just a me being pet peeve, is the hull is in two halves, and when I say hull, I'm talking the gray segment where the hangers and all are. You have to glue the two halves together, and then you have to glue those two halves onto the lower hull should you buy the full hull kit. What I would have rather had them done is just do the whole hull as a bathtub style um, mold, and then you place the hangar decks up on top. To me, that would have been a more efficient way of doing it. At this view, you can see those bars under the flight deck going down to the deck. Those were not in the kit. I had to use make those using stretch sprue, so just beware of that. That is a detail that was there that should be added. Another thing is, but I think this is just a general issue for 1700 scale ships, the bars that support the gantries above, or the catwalks with the AA guns, they're too thick in the model, so I had to make uh, new ones using stretch sprue. You can see an abundance of them fairly well in this shot. Now another thing I did find odd when I was building this, and I will just go on ahead and give this warning to anybody else who might build it under curiosity, is when you see the flight deck you'll notice that there are searchlights scattered around pretty much the center of the flight deck. Do know that these were actually there, I looked up photographs and I confirmed that the searchlights were literally scattered around the center line of the flight deck. So, if you thought landing and taking off on aircraft carriers was hard as it is, well, try taking off and landing on a Kagi. Now, what you'll notice about my kit, though, is I do not have any aircraft on the flight deck. That's because the kit only came with nine planes, and I decided I'm not going to be placing nine planes on a ship that's built to hold 92. So I just left those off. Now, when you look at the decal for the flight deck, this is the Pearl Harbor setup for the paint scheme on the flight deck. If you want the midway version, you have to paint that yourself. Good thing is, I know Akagi was far more important than midway, so I just was fine leaving it as it looked during Pearl Harbor. Now, around the windows of the bridge, you can see these white bags. These are actually quite common on Japanese warships. They are mattresses. I just made them using rolled up clay. I believe you can see me doing that in my IJN Kuma sinking video. Another thing I had added was the cables running across the deck to stop aircraft. This was made using stretch sprue. And that's pretty much all I had to comment on the kit. I think it was a very good kit. I do highly suggest it for what it is. Besides, it also makes for a good opener of building Japanese aircraft carriers if you're going to do the big six. Well, if you have enjoyed this video, why not subscribe and leave a comment down below. And have a wonderful day.